Bovine besmoitiosis is either a mild or severe, acute to chronic, but usually non-fatal disease. The typical thickening, hardening, folding and puckering of the skin during the chronic stage gave rise to the common name elephant skin disease. Bovine besnoitiosis is widespread in Africa and has a patchy distribution elsewhere. It has been recorded in France, Portugal, Israel, Kazakhstan, South Korea and Venezuela. In South Africa, it is endemic in the bushveld areas of northern and northwest provinces, Mpumalanga and KwaZulu-Natal. A few cases have been recorded in Northern Cape Province and Western Free State. The causative organism, Besnoitia besnoiti, is one of the tissue cyst-forming coccidia. Cats have been shown to be definitive hosts of some other Besnoitia species, and workers in Kazakhstan have claimed this to be the case for Besnoitia besnoiti. Despite a substantial research effort, in which domestic cats and a wide variety of wild carnivores, such as lions, leopards, and black-backed jackals, and birds such as vultures were used, the life cycle of the African parasite has not been elucidated. Mechanical transmission of cyst organisms, or bradyzoites, by biting flies is the only confirmed means of transmission. When feeding on infected cattle, blood-sucking flies such as horse flies or tabanids, tsetse flies and stable flies rupture besnoitia cysts in the skin. The bradyzoites from the cysts can survive on the mouthparts of the fly and are injected into a new host when the fly feeds again. These organisms enter the circulation and multiply rapidly in endothelial cells of blood vessels in the skin, fascia, upper respiratory tract and testes. The resulting daughter cells or tachyzoites emerge into the circulation from damaged endothelial cells and reinvade adjacent or more distant endothelial cells where the process is repeated. This results in vasculitis, increased permeability of the blood vessels and anazarca. The acute first stage is referred to as the anazarca stage. This cycle of parasite development lasts for two to three weeks and is gradually superseded by cyst formation. During the anazarca stage, which is rarely observed clinically, the animal has a fever and shows hyperemia of the muzzle and severe subcutaneous edema, especially of the face and anterior part of the body. The edematous fluid gravitates down, resulting in swelling of the dewlap, brisket and ventral parts of the body. Lacrimation and serous nasal discharge may occur, and bulls often suffer from orchitis. Affected animals are photophobic and usually seek shade. Cyst formation commences about one week after the initial cycle of proliferation. Activated histiocytes are invaded at the same sites where proliferation occurred in the endothelium. The parasites multiply in a parasitiferous vacuole. Concentric layers of collagen are laid down around the parasitized histiocytes. The nuclei of infected histiocytes divide, giving rise to a multinucleate cell. As the parasites multiply within the vacuole, the host cell cytoplasm is compressed into a narrow rim. These cysts can be up to 400 microns in diameter and contain up to 200,000 bradyzoites. The connective tissue around the cysts causes marked thickening of the skin with resulting circulatory disturbances, alopecia and necrosis. The chronic second stage is called the scleroderma stage. In mild chronic cases, the skin on the head, neck and forequarters becomes thickened and less pliable. In most cases there is virtually no hair loss, but some animals show a mild alopecia, particularly on the forehead and around the eyes and muzzle. 
In severe chronic cases, a multitude of cysts form in the skin and subcutis, in the mucosa of the nasal turbinates and nasopharynx, as well as in the intima of the larger blood vessels of the head, neck and legs, and even in the endocardium. The most prominent clinical sign is progressive thickening, hardening and prominent folding and puckering of the skin, which may be widespread or more localized. This is accompanied by progressive hair loss. The most severe skin lesions occur in the perineum and inner thighs and on the hind legs. The skin of the legs is often hard and markedly thickened. These animals move slowly and with difficulty, apparently due to pain. Deep raw fissures which form may become secondarily infected by bacteria and also attract blowflies resulting in maggot infestation. Reduced fertility or even infertility results from orchitis, followed by uni or bilateral testicular atrophy and induration. In subclinical, mild and severe cases, besnoitiosis is diagnosed clinically by demonstrating the presence of cysts on the sclera. After application of local anesthetic to the eye, a delicate scraping is made and examined under the microscope when the isolated cysts will be clearly visible. Cysts can easily be identified histopathologically in biopsies of affected skin. Bovine besnoitiosis can be confused with various other diseases. During the acute or anazarka stage, the febrile reaction can be confused with that of other infectious diseases particularly if no subcutaneous edema occurs. Where there is edema of the head, legs and ventral parts, cardiac failure, acute lumpy skin disease and acute photosensitivity should be considered. The skin lesions during the chronic stage may be similar to dermatophilosis or Sencoba disease, sarcoptic and demodectic mange, severe dermatophytosis, subacute to chronic sweating sickness, lumpy skin disease and chronic photosensitivity, as well as poisoning with hairy vetch, mercury and chlorinated naphthalenes. Most bovines becoming infected do not show overt clinical signs. A few small cysts on the scleral conjunctiva are frequently the only indication of infection. Those showing overt symptoms are merely the tip of the iceberg. The disease is of economic importance nevertheless. The areas in South Africa where bovine besnoitiosis occurs are generally used for beef production under extensive conditions. Breeding bulls raised in non-endemic areas and introduced onto these ranches are particularly at risk. Even though fatal cases are rare, these bulls may become sterile. At slaughter, carcasses of infected cattle are condemned as unfit for human consumption because of emaciation and the presence of cysts the size of sugar granules in the subcutaneous and intermuscular fasciae. Besnoitiosis has also been reported in goats, while a scleroderma form caused by Besnoitia benetti is rarely reported in horses. There is as yet no effective specific treatment of clinical cases. It may be advisable to cull these animals as they could serve as sources of infection to other cattle. Systematic elimination of all chronically infected cattle detected by examination of the scleral conjunctiva in a closed herd leads to a decrease of new infections in the herd. Until the epidemiology of the disease is better understood, it is unclear whether such measures are sufficient to control the disease. Vaccination is another option. A breakthrough in the control of the disease came when veterinarians found besnoitia cysts in various antelopes, such as impalas and blue wildebeest in the Kruger National Park in South Africa. There were no skin lesions in these animals and the cysts were seen mainly in the endothelium of the large blood vessels of the visceral organs. 
This strain of the parasite thus differed from the bovine strain in being viscerotropic and not dermatropic. Bovines infected experimentally with this strain did not develop skin lesions, but showed a high level of immunity when challenged with the bovine strain. The antelope strain thus had the makings of a vaccine. The Kruger National Park is an endemic foot and mouth disease area and fresh specimens could not be removed from the park. The problem was overcome by infecting laboratory rabbits which are extremely susceptible to the parasite and transporting them to the Onustapurt Veterinary Institute. Rabbits develop severe orchitis during the acute stage of the disease. The antelope strain was adapted to tissue culture and a frozen vaccine was developed. This was the first vaccine ever against a coccidian in mammals to be made available commercially. The vaccine contains at least 10 million organisms per dose of 2 milliliters and is given subcutaneously. A large swelling may develop at the site of injection and the regional lymph node may enlarge. The vaccine is safe even for pregnant cows and heifers. Vaccination gives complete protection to the clinical form of the disease. Some animals may develop subclinical infection as judged by the development of cysts in the scleral conjunctiva. Animals should be vaccinated at six to eight months of age and revaccinated annually for two to three years. Wild animals are often regarded as being incompatible with livestock. The development of the bovine besnoitiosis vaccine is a shining example of potential benefit to livestock derived from studying wildlife diseases. <laughs>